My name is Vincent Jones, and I'm a graduate student at John Hopkins University of the Urban Teachers Program, where I both study and teach secondary school mathematics. I'm originally from Sonny, Kansas, and I'm a recent graduate of the University of Pennsylvania, where I studied math. This is my story. Numbers were always cool to me back in grade school. I enjoyed the shapes and funny looking symbols that would emerge on my line paper. Protractors and rulers, the standardized tools of elementary mathematics were frequent guides to my appreciation of numerical relationships. And with the problem solving process, I saw myself as a numerical technician who could mix and match digits like some sort of orthopedic surgeon in an operating room. Needless to say, I loved the arithmetic. But when it came, but when I entered my sixth grade year, the climax of elementary school mathematics, I soon got bored with basic skills and dreamed of skipping ahead to the next system of sophisticated scribbles, pre-algebra. Thankfully, in August of 2008, before the summer's leaves turned, lost their green, I was placed into an elite group of innocent and young mathematical minds who braved the likes of our new instructor, Ms. Rhonda Gertz, the chief executive officer, officer of our school's problem-solving operation assuming a largely underpaid role as both a classroom lecturer and a formal student therapist, Ms. Kurtz would engineer math methods on an antiquated projector screen, only to then wipe away a 12-year-old's tears after administering difficult examinations. The course was tough, probably much more demanding than what the average adolescent can handle, but I learned so many things those days, namely lessons about hard work, hope, teamwork, and the importance of a good bowl of cereal before a 7 a.m. class. Moreover, in our old suburban Kansas town, Ms. Kurtz remodeled the pre-enlightenment system of thought and made the rusty, rusty numbers dance. Decimals, percentages, wonky integers, and imp improper fractions were twisted and rearranged like a confused salsa dancer as she taught us how to order operations and properly combine fractions. Further, we did projects. For example, for volume and surface area lessons, we waltzed around theories that describe the total size of non-for-profit soda cans, like a Pepsi can, for example. And then we made cool, funky dances out of mathematical sketches of Kansas's geography, as well as other states in the United States. Admittedly, I shed a few tears because it was hard, but I was ultimately intrigued because never before had I been exposed to such a sophisticated set of ideas. And as I, along with other students, watch our instructor perform mathematical miracles, I secretly wish for the day that I too could write and write and I could teach and write magic on a board. Thanks to her, Mrs. Gertz, that day has finally come. To me, Mrs. Gertz was a sixth grade superhero whose numerical machinations have done nothing but enrich my educational experience throughout the years. And since that fateful fall of 2008, I have never stopped doing the magic that she taught me. I did it in high school, blending her teachings on of communicative and associative laws with advanced theorems on calculus and, and trigonometry. I did it in college, writing mathematical proofs about her beautiful fractions and, and negative numbers on whiteboards. And now, as a math teacher in Title I schools in Baltimore County, I use this magical system to get my students to experience the necessary pain and joy that comes from a simple math problem and to think critically about the world around them. And finally, before I close, I want to say that from a social justice perspective, this magical system of thought or math is far from a, robot, a robotic procedure to be passed down like a sick uh, poultry in a meat pack, a packaging plant. Now it's an art form, a practice of learning from failures and a beautiful arrangement of truth and infinite design that my students, irrespective of their marginalized backgrounds, must take part in in order to revolutionize society in which we all live in. Thus inspired by the unpopular wisdom of a white woman from Kansas, my students won't just, won't just be doing math. They'll be doing critical thinking from a mathematical lens that will bring vexing challenges to their communities. I may ask, find the slope of a graph depicting the unwarranted police arrests in West Baltimore. I could ask, find the radius of a circle that encloses one of the largest food deserts in Baltimore. And then I could say, write out the median salary of African Americans in Baltimore in scientific notation. In all, I want my kids to see that their math is beautiful. I want them to succeed against incalculable odds 
and know that their work is the key to our nation's progress. And most importantly, in the same way that I was challenged by a teacher who saw my potential 12 years ago, I want them to know that they should believe in themselves too and stop at nothing short of excellence. Thank you all for listening. And above all, thank you, Mrs. Kurtz.